Alright, so this is an overview of chapter one. Anatomy is the study of structures in the human body. Physiology is how those structures work. There's also complementary of structure and function. Basically, the structures are shaped a specific way to do their function. All right, so then there's levels of, organi of structural organization. That's the chemical level, cellular level, tissue level, organ level, organ system level, and organismic level. The cellular level, I mean, the chemical level is the simplest. Um, the cellular level is the smallest thing that you can have that's alive. Um, the tissue level is two or more um, cells working together for a similar function. Um, and so on for the organ level and organismic level. So the organ level is just two or more tissues working together. Organ system levels, two or more organs working together. And then the organismic level is just the highest level. The example would be you. You're the overall product. Alright, so this is a breakdown of the organ systems. You have the integumentary system, which is the skin, it protects from abrasion. Uh, the skeletal system, which provides support for your body. Muscular system, which contracts to provide movement. Nervous system, which stores information. And endocrine system, which produces hormones. And then your cardiovascular system, which circulates your blood. All right, and then it moves on to the lymphatic and immune system. The lymphatic and immune system, lymphatic houses the immune system, um, and then the immune, like, obviously fights off foreign invaders. Your respiratory system helps you breathe, you know, you give off, it's the exchange of respiratory gases. Um, your digestive system, digest your food, yeah. <laughs> it digests your food. Um, Absor absorbs and breaks down nutrients. Um, your urinary system obviously removes waste, and the reproductive system is where you make babies. Okay. So this is maintaining life functions. You have to maintain boundaries, which is basically separating yourself from an outside environment. You don't want your blood just free floating through your body, so you have blood vessels. Um, responsiveness and excitability. You have to realize there's a change in the environment and be able to act upon it. Uh, movement, which is basically you have to get from point A to point B. And then there's digestion, which is breaking down the food and absorbing the nutrients. All right. So then your metabolism is the sum total of all the chemical reactions in your body. Um, excretion is like we need to remove waste, obviously. Um, reproduction, um, reproduction in cells. Um, your body needs to reproduce cells all the time. And then growth is in growth in size and your cells as well. So this is survival needs. Uh, nutrients is one. We have to take in nutrients to provide energy to our body. Uh, oxygen, we use oxygen to produce ATP, which is super important. Water, uh, we have to take in water because our body is made up of 50 to 60 percent of it. Uh, normal body temperature, we have to maintain a normal body temperature. Don't want to be too cold, too hot. Um, the normal body temperature is 98.6 um, degrees Fahrenheit and then 37 degrees Celsius. Um, appropriate atmospheric pressure, we're always under pressure, um, there's pressure pushing on us from each direction per square inch um, just to keep us grounded. Alright, so this is the language of anatomy. Um, the anatomical position is just like the standard body position. Your toes are facing forward and your thumbs are facing outwards. <laughs> and then uh, some directional terms are superior and inferior. These are used for your head and your trunk. Superior means above, inferior is below. Then you have anterior versus posterior, which is basically just anterior is front, posterior is back. And then there's medial and lateral. Medial is closer to your midline and lateral is further away. Uh, then we have proximal and distal. Uh, these are used for your arms and legs. Uh, proximal means closer to my body then, and distal means further away to my body then. An example would be your elbow is proximal to your wrist, and your wrist would be distal from your elbow. All right, and then it goes into superficial and deep. Uh, superficial is just closer to the surface, and deep is deep inside. So an example would be my heart is deep to my sternum. 
Um, and then we have body planes and sections, which would be like the directions of the cuts. Um, I'm going to stick right here. <laughs> There's the transverse. The transverse. Um, it's a horizontal cut. It just cuts you into the top and bottom. The frontal um, is going to be front and back. Um, and then the sagittal, there's right and left, there's mid sagittal, which just goes straight down the middle. You have an equal amount of, on each side, and then parasagittal is an even amount on the left and right. Okay, so this is still part of the language of anatomy. Uh, we have body cavities, which are just hollow areas where we store our organs. Uh, our first one is the dorsal body cavity, which will house your brain and your spine, and that is broken down into two smaller cavities. You have the cranial cavity, which houses your brain, and then the vertebral cavity, which houses your spine. All right, and then on a side note, um, just keep in mind that the visceral means that it's a membrane that sticks to your organ, and then parietal means it's a membrane that sticks to the cavity. Um, so then it goes into the ventral body cavity, which includes the thoracic and abdominopelvic cavity. Um, the thoracic um, also breaks down, so the thoracic has the pericardial, which houses your heart. Um, and then that also has the visceral pericardium, which is a membrane that sticks to the heart. Um, and then the parietal pericardium, which is the membrane on the thoracic cavity. Um, then there's two pleural cavities, um, which means that it just houses your right and left lungs. Um, you don't physically see it with your lungs in the way, but if you take the lungs out, you'll see it. Um, same with the visceral and um, parietal. So there's a visceral pleural and parietal pleura. And then it goes into your abdominal pelvic cavity. Um, your abdominal pelvic cavity, cavity is under the thoracic and above um, your hips. Um, and then it also has goes into the visceral peritoneum and parietal peritoneum, and then it goes into your pelvic cavity, which is at your um, hip bones, pretty much. That also has the visceral and parietal peritoneum. All right, so then it goes into homeostasis. Homeostasis is super important. It's the ability to maintain re relatively stable internal conditions even though the world is changing around you. So an example would be if you're outside, it's cold outside, your body shivers to obviously bring up your body temperature. Um, there's homeostatic regulation. So there's a receptor which monitors a particular variable and sends the inf that information to the control center. So like in your house, your um, thermometer would be your receptor. The control center determines what to do to fix the problem, which would be your thermostat, that's an example in your house, and then it sends it to the effector, which fixes that certain problem, which would be your AC unit in your home. And then there are two methods of homeostatic regulation. You have negative feedback, which will return a variable to its center point and works against the stimuli. An example of this is temperature control. And then there is positive feedback, which works with the stimuli, it will increase it. And an example of that is blood clotting and labor contractions.